Hello and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we'll take a look at searching through the use of query strings in the URI. The query string API is powerful and contains many features, so I'm just going to show you the basic and most important ways to use it. If you need a complete walkthrough of the query string API, then please refer to the documentation. Let's write a simple query to start with. I'll use the e-commerce index and search for documents with the product type. To perform searches, I'll use the underscore search API because I want to search by query string. Let's write a simple query to start with. I'll use the e-commerce index and search for documents with the product type. To perform searches, I'll use the underscore search API. And because I want to search by query string, I will add a Q parameter. The value of this parameter is going to be our search string. For the first example, I just want to show you how you can match all of the documents of the product type within the index, which you can do by using an asterisk as a wildcard. This can be useful if you want to have an index of all the documents, for instance. So I'm just going to say Q equals an asterisk. Let me go ahead and issue this request. As you can see, a thousand documents are matched, which is the total number of documents in the index. I'll just take a moment to discuss the important parts of the result. Within the hits key that you can see over here on the right hand side, there are two meta properties about the results. The total property contains the number of matched results, while the max score property contains the highest score of all the matched documents. The nested hits property contains an array of matched documents. For each document, you can see the meta fields that we discussed in a previous lecture. Another important property is underscore score, which is a score indicating how well the document matched the search query. This number is based on complex mathematical calculations, and you don't need to know more about this for now. The underscore source property contains the matched document as the JSON that we added to the index when we added the document. Next, let's try to search for a specific value, for example, let's say pasta. So let's run this query. Now by default, the query string searches for all fields, unless one or more fields are specified in the query. In this example, we are therefore searching for the term pasta in any field within a document of the type product within the e-commerce index. So as you can see, we have a number of results where the product names include pasta. Like I said, we search for all the fields, but it just so happens that only the name field has a value of pasta, in my index at least. We can also specify which fields should contain the value. We can do this by adding the name of the field, followed by the colon and then the value. So let's update the query. I'll say Q equals name colon pasta, like so. This means that we're searching for pasta in the name field. With our test data, this gives the same result. But if I change the field's name to description, then you will see that we get no matches. So let's try this. Description. And like I said, no matches. Those were the very basics of searching with query strings in Elasticsearch. In the following lectures, I will talk about more features before I will move on to talking about the query DSL. Thanks for watching and happy searching.